Welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on a 2014 Subaru Forester. Now this thing came in with an intermittent ABS light and I pulled the codes out of it and it's for the steering wheel angle sensor. I took it for a ride to see if I could get the light to come on and immediately noticed we have a lot of other problems. So I threw it up on the lift and decided to check out the suspension because the first thing I always do with an angle sensor code is check and make sure all of our wheels are going straight and our alignment is correct. Uh, it turns out our steering wheel is off a little bit and three of the four wheels are falling off the car. So we need to take care of that before we worry about our intermittent code because chances are that's going to fix our code. So let's see which wheels are falling off and which one is not. Now when I took it for a ride it was pretty obvious that we had a bad wheel bearing but sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a right or a left. I definitely knew it was in the rear but this time I put it up on the lift and uh, it's pretty obvious this one is bad and if this one isn't making noise it isn't going to matter if we change it because it definitely needs to be changed. So we're going to start here. If it turns out the other one is making noise then we have four tires that are falling off the car. Mr. Spotty's causing a noise. Checked out this one, quite a bit of play in there. This side, our inner tie rod here is a little loose. And finally, I have a control arm bushing in here that's worn out. Ball joint that's a little worn. So we'll start with the easiest part, which should be our wheel bearing. Maybe that'll build our confidence for the rest of this job, which is probably when the struggle bus is gonna show up. So. Let's get the easy part done. We'll pull off our tire and we'll pull off our caliper. We're gonna take the bracket and everything off. We don't need to separate it. We'll hang it off to the side. And we can't get our electric ratchet in there so we have to do this the caveman way with hand tools. And Genius probably should have taken the bottom bolt off first so he didn't have to hold the caliper in place while he took the bottom bolt out. But he didn't. So now he does. Now that our unnecessary struggle is over and our caliper is loose, we can hang it up out of our way. Push the caliper back in a little bit by twisting it. So now we'll grab what used to be a bungee cord. Now it's just the hook from the end and it makes a good caliper hanger. So we can hang our caliper up out of harm's way and keep any stress off of the brake hose. Then we can pull our rotor off of here. And our bearing is pretty loose. We'll pull the drive axle nut off of it. Tap the drive axle out. I was honestly expecting much more of a struggle. So now we can unbolt the back of our hub. And just four bolts on it to hold it into the knuckle. And we're gonna put the one back in a couple threads just so we can knock this out of here. Big Bertha is gonna help us. The drive axle came out easy, but the hub is not coming out of the knuckle. So we changed its mind. We'll pull that bolt off the back. Now we can pull our hub out of our knuckle, but not out of the backing plate. Slide it off the drive axle. And that ridge of rust is going to make this a little difficult. We're going to need our handheld hub press. A couple taps and knock it out of there. And we'll hang the backing plate up. I believe that's the noisy one. 
Ooh. You got a little worm in there. In the pile. That will clean all the rust out of our knuckle so that our new bearing slides right back in there and to make it easy on the next guy when he's inevitably changing this hub again. Although this one did make it 140,000 miles, so. We'll spray a little grease on our bare surfaces just to hopefully give them a little bit longer without some rust. We'll even coat the drive axle. Because I might be the next guy. We'll put our hub back in our backing plate. Do our best to line up the holes. Slide it back on our drive axle and into our knuckle. line up our holes. If they don't line up, we could always use a punch to square them up a little bit. But I think I got them in the right spot. We'll start our bolts and then run them in there. Tighten them down to manufacturer specs. Three electric Ugga Duggas. We'll throw the rotor back on. We can get it on there. We'll use our bumper installation tool. And we can put our caliper back on, take it off its hanger, and put the hanger on the lift so we don't end up leaving it on the car, which I've done before. Put our bolts back in our caliper. Who needs power tools when you have caffeinated Scott? Tighten up our drive axle nut. We'll just snug it up. Now we're going to break out this funny looking clicking wrench and tighten it down the rest of the way. That should be good. Now we'll hammer on the locking tab for the nut so it doesn't back itself off. And throw our tire back on there. And we'll snug up all the lug nuts and torque them all down when it's on the ground. And we have three other wheels to do. So now we'll head over to the left front, change our control arm. Which should be the second worst part of this job. Probably give us the most struggle, but at least it's not an inner tie rod end. So we'll pull our cotter pin out of here. It's a little rusty, so it's coming out in pieces. But it is coming out eventually. These ball joints actually come apart two different ways. They come out of the control arm. You can unbolt the bottom of them, and then they unbolt from the knuckle. There's a bolt that goes through the knuckle and squeezes them together on the top. So we'll take the bottom one out first because it's a lot easier. We're still working on this cotter pin. Okay, I'll say it for you. That's not a hammer, or it's the wrong hammer. It is a hammer. Everything's a hammer if you're brave enough. Piece by piece, it's coming out. This is what we deal with in the rust belt. Now finally we can get our socket on there and spin it out. Knock our control arm out of our knuckle knock the ball joint out of the control arm and then pry it out of there. Can find something that won't bend to pry on. And we win. Kinda. We got enough to get in there and knock our sway bar link loose. We can get the impact in there before. So we'll get our adjustable locking sway bar link holders on the back side and we'll spin the nut off of here. 
We're gonna have to work it back and forth because the threads are pretty rusty and I didn't get one of these. So we gotta save our old one. It helps if you make the sway bar length base. It will come out eventually that way. It also helps if the battery on the impact isn't dead. So with a new battery, well, we'll be able to get this thing out of here. There we go. And now we can unbolt the shield on the bottom of the car. We'll leave one screw in it so it just hangs. We can unbolt this cross brace under our control arm. We'll just loosen up the front and push it out of our way. And we can unbolt this bracket that covers up the back of our control arm. And unbolt the control arm. Big stud that runs through it. Now we can unbolt the front of the control arm. It's just a nut and a bolt. Get a wrench on there. Push the bolt through there. And wiggle it out of there. We get a hammer and tap our control arm. Watch your toes. I'm not wearing my steel-toed flip-flops. Better be careful. And now Big Bertha is going to help us pull our ball joint out of there. I just put the nut on it and I'm hammering it out of there. It's supposed to just kind of fall out. But it was pretty rusty, and the bolt that holds it together that pinches the knuckle was pretty rusted in there. It required heat and prayers, and finally it came out without breaking. So we cleaned all that rust out of there. We'll tap our new one in there. I also hammered a chisel into our knuckle there where it's split. That holds it apart a little bit, makes it easier to get all this stuff in there. And we'll start our bolt a couple threads so we don't end up tearing it up with the actual tools. Now that the ball joint is in there and our bolt is started, we can tap out our chisel, our placeholder, more of a wedge, and then we'll start tightening up our bolt. We're not gonna use any power tools on this. I don't wanna break that bolt or strip out any threads because that would make life very difficult. So we'll take our time. We'll throw a little grease in there to make it easier on the next guy and to help us get the bolt the rest of the way in. We don't need to worry about lock tightening it. The rust will take care of that for us. And we'll finish tightening it up. We can throw our control arm up there. Put on the ball joint first. And we'll try to get the front of it into its slot and put the rear on at the same time. And it does not want to go together. So it looks like we're gonna need our control arm installation tool. Just give it a little tap into place. And one extra tap so it doesn't end up on our feet. We still need to get the front of it to go into the slot to line up the hole. So we're just gonna tap it into place. And luckily they gave us the sway bar link mount that makes a nice place to hammer. So we're just gonna tap it in there and so we can get our bolt through. Looks like we're almost there. If I actually hit it, it'd go somewhere. So we awkwardly hammered it in far enough that we can start the bolt. We'll thread it in there, it'll straighten out the bushing. And then we'll just run it the rest of the way in with the impact. Hopefully it comes out the other end. And we can put the nut on it. We'll snug it up, but we're not going to tighten it down just yet. We need to load the bushing before we tighten it all the way down. We can tap the rear of the control arm up on the stud. Put our little bracket underneath it and put the nut on there. And we'll put the bolts for our bracket into the floor. And we can tighten everything up. We 
use more electric ugga duggas on this one. Tighten up our ball joint since we had the socket out. Let it go around until the castle nut lines up with the hole. And we can put our cotter pin in there and bend it over. Bend the other side over. And they probably did that wrong, but that's okay. That ain't coming out. We'll put our locking sway bar link holder in. And tighten that up. And try and get our socket back. It's sitting down on a jack stand here, so the front suspension's loaded. I'll tighten up this bolt back here. Hopefully that bushing will last a little longer. I'll put our brace back under the control arm. up the other side and now we can put our little splash shield back up. The splash shield actually bolts to that. We'll zip our splash shield in here. Now we're ready to throw our tire back on this side. And we put it off long enough. We need to head over to the right front and do that inner tie rod in. First, we're gonna make sure our wheel is nice and tight. There's no slop in it. We'll pull the wheel off over here. We'll break our jam nut loose for our tie rod end. Just use the bumper installation tool for that. Now, we're gonna have another fight with another cotter pin. Somebody's been here before. This tie rod end's been changed. So we're going to pick apart what's left of this cotter pin. And if it doesn't come out, I'm just gonna break it off in there. We got most of it. The rest of it's just about to die. So we broke off the rest of it. Now we can knock it loose from the knuckle. I can't get a good swing on it, at least not without taking out the camera. So we'll turn the wheel a little bit, get a good swing on it. And it's not ready to come out yet. A couple more hits, still not ready. And she's out. Now we can spin the outer tie rod end off. We're gonna count our turns to try to get our alignment as close as possible, but it won't be. It's going for an alignment anyway, so as long as we eyeball it, it'll be fine. Now we can clamp our adjustable locking sway bar link holder onto our inner tie rod end. It's a multi-purpose tool. Put it on there nice and tight because it looks like this jam nut's pretty rusty. All right. And now we'll just hit it with the impact and spin it off of there. That's my theory anyway. And it's going. Look a little bit. We need to get this off of here so we can slide the boot off. Pull our pliers off. And we'll pull the spring clamp off. Yay. And the inside of the boot was held on with a zip tie. And there is said zip tie. We'll pull that out of there. Toss it on the ground for the sea turtles roaming the shop floor and pull our boot off of there. 
Now we can use our inner tie rod end tool. Put the little wrench end on there. There's not a whole lot of room in here. Get the rest of our tie rod tool. Hold that wrench in place. And put the tool on there. It has a lock ring that holds that wrench end in place, but there wasn't even enough room for that, so I'm just hoping it doesn't fall out of there. If you keep tension on it, it usually stays in there. So we'll make sure it's all the way engaged, and we'll try and break it loose. Don't make your inner tie rod face, and it comes loose. And we're just going to spin it out of there, slowly but surely. Once it's out of there, we can put our new one on. Put a little Loctite on it. Make sure it doesn't come out. Hopefully I'm not the next guy. And then we'll spin it in there. That's as far as we can go by hand. So now we'll put the little wrench end on there. And then we get the inner tie rod end tool over it. And tighten it down. Click. grab the little wrench end out of there before we end up giving it away to the customer. A lot less play in that one. So we can slide our boot back over it. Make sure the boot clips in the grooves and the tie rod end. I think it's in there. Slide our spring clamp up there and then we'll Put the spring clamp back over our boot. And we'll get a zip tie for the other side. We'll put our jam nut back on there. Brand new fresh one. And we'll put our outer tie rod end on. We did throw some never sees on the inside of the threads. So hopefully there'll be a little less struggle the next time. We'll go the same number of turns. Don't know if that's going to help us or not. Put the tie run end back in our knuckle. Put the nut on it. This one doesn't use a cotter pin. It's got a nylon ring inside it that'll lock it in there. that up and then we can put on some of our mechanics glitter so that jam nut will spin off of there a little easier than our last one did and now we can turn the nut down to meet the outer tire on in and get mechanics glitter all over the place We'll tighten up our jam nut. Click. And we can throw a tire back on here. And that took care of our play in this side. So all of our wheels are securely fastened now. So our noise is gone. All of our wheels are 
securely fastened to the car. So our job here is done. We're going to send it for the alignment. After they get that done, we'll recalibrate the steering wheel angle sensor and that should take care of their light and everything should be good to go. So this is the first time I've ever seen this car. Maybe next time I can do all the body work on it. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.